Let's uh, talk about earnings and let me welcome on board Rajiv Rajgopal, MD at Axon Noble India to talk about how their quarterly performance was. Rajiv, hi, good morning. Uh, you've reported a revenue growth better than most of your peers. Do you expect to continue this kind of growth and uh, what is the kind of market share gain that you're now sitting at? Good morning, Aksha. Uh, you know, a very warm uh, welcome to you and all the viewers. Uh, yes, last quarter has been uh, pretty strong for us on our top line. We grew top line at 50%. As a result, uh, we've gained market share. Now, when you look at market share, you've got to look at it by different categories in which we operate. Huh? So in our paints business, which accounts for now about 67% of our turnover, we've had a market share gain. Uh, I, in my assessment, it would be almost about a 0.3.4. We are now hovering closer to 6 uh, to 6%. Um, if you look at some of our coatings businesses, which also registered very strong growths, uh, we've seen some, again, uh, market share gains uh, after a long time in our automotive and specialty coatings business. Our powder coatings business continues to grow strong and gain market share. Uh, we've also seen a strong revival in our marine and protective business. Overall, a very strong quarter for uh, Axon Nobel India. Rajiv, you know, the one thing which um, continued to be, I think, the most dominant factor was your raw material costs, right? And especially the kind of volatility that one has uh, seen in crude prices. Now, as I understand, there was a price hike that you did undertake in the first quarter. Tell me the quantum and what kind of trend do you now see for pricing going forward, considering crude may not have fallen as much as we wanted to, but it's fallen regardless, about 30% from the top. So yes, yeah, so to answer your question straight, we've taken a 3% price increase in the month of May, followed it up with approximately a half percent price increase in July, and thereafter, again, a similar uh, tranche in uh, August. All right, uh, now for the quarter, obviously the 3% paid it, uh, played it, but two parts. The, I think the raw material inflation, we're seeing an inflation on our average closer to about 7% really panning across. And that's something that we need to cover as we move forward. We will be looking at very calibrated price increases depending on which categories we are still seeing an erosion of the contribution margin. Uh, if you look at our margins, uh, given that we are a paints and coatings player, is pretty healthy uh, compared to most players. And so really our endeavors to try and make sure we sort of continue that, that sort of stride. Uh, two parts to your question. There's, see, there are two elements. One is, of course, the entire raw material cost, and you've sort of asked about it. The second is Forex. Remember that we all buy in uh, you know, dollars, and as a result, uh, the Forex also during the quarter, uh, you know, you saw the, uh, the, the, the dollar at almost uh, 80 rupees. So you know, that's also been a bit of a headwind that we had. Uh, hopefully, in the quarter ahead, we'll see some tailwind. Uh, yes, there are some uh, softening happening, but I don't see that coming into a PL immediately. I think it'll be almost by end of the year when we'll really start seeing it into the PL or maybe the uh, so the fourth quarter of the year. You know, uh, that's when we'll start seeing a flow through. So we will need to sort of look at certain calibrated price increases, and teams are working on it. We've got a very scientific way in which we look at it, uh, and we will have to sort of continue to take some very calibrated price increases as and when required. Nikunj also joining in. Always good to connect with you. Hi, Nikunj. Good so morning. what would be the forward guidance for this year's festival season? Because this year, the festival season, in a sense, is coming slightly early. Ganpati yeah. starts in September in uh, Maharashtra. This time, it's in August. The Shira has got uh, also pre-pawned. Will we capture the bumper September festival boost in this quarter? Logically, yes, Nikunj. So if you really look at it, you're right. Uh, Diwali is this time on October 24th. So really, uh, so we do expect a bigger September than uh, usual. Normally, uh, in the months where Diwali is in November, you normally see a huge October. So yes, to that extent. But you know, Nikunj, just one point. I think, look, you know, of course, there is a blip during Diwali, uh, and that's a given. But, you know, I would also say that post Diwali also sales continue. I mean, you know, if you look at the painting cycles, uh, of course, it's raining in many parts of the country right now from an exterior point of view, right? Uh, I do see that sort of extending right up to at least mid December, yeah, at least in places where, you know, winter sets in, et cetera. So, my sense. Uh, to to really look at it, we don't give forward guidance, but I do look at the fact that we will be sort of looking at strong double-digit growths uh, even as we continue to move forward. The new normal for margins. When I say new normal, we are looking at numbers which were for the quarter gone by. That time, the average price of crude was definitely above hundred dollars per barrel. But now things are coming down. So, 
given that there is a currency and then there is a crude decline, what is the new normal for your margins? See, look, Nikun, as far as we are concerned, we've to, you know, informed our investors that we are committed to maintaining a double digit uh, margins, EBIT margins. And so really, uh, so that's why we end up taking calibrated price increases without dramatically impacting demand. Uh, you would remember, I mentioned this in the earlier interviews, to we were one of the first, despite being a challenger brand, to really lead some of the price increases. And I'm glad now it's sort of panned across and most players have seen the impact of the commodity cost. Uh, so in terms of margins, I think we will continue to look at double digit margins. Uh, to your question on the fact that crude has come below 100, I look, I think we've got to remember the inventory uh, that we carry is almost a month, month and a half, and it's gone up because of all the logistics and supply chain challenges. So I think it will be a while before that sort of comes down while we are working on it. So I really see the impact on margins in terms of benefit uh, to us and players coming only in the end of, you know, in Q4, uh, really. Uh, so really in the, you know, in, in the Jan to March quarter, I, I do think it will take a while given the stock holding that the market has, the fact that Diwali is on the corner, etc. We have carrying, we are carrying stock at you know the prices we bought. So I think that will at least last us till end of Diwali. Uh, so it's only I really think you know in terms of first branches you may get a month in the next quarter, but really it will be in Q4 where if at all uh, you know there is no other external circumstances impacting, you will see some sort of flow through. But, you know, Rajiv, inflation is real. Inflation is here to stay. Price hikes have been taken by a company. Urban income has been under pressure. Rural income has been slightly uh, compressed. But most of the paint companies we've spoken to, whether it is Axo or Kansai or Indigo Paints, all of them are very confident about the growth in the paint industry. So what is fueling this optimism? Is it because the demand has got pushed suddenly because of COVID and that is what is fueling optimism or this demand is real and it's here to stay? Is it cyclical? Is it structural? Let me rephrase it. So I think there's a combination of both. Uh, what I'm not able to really put a thumb on is exactly put the percentages on what is cyclical and what is structural. Uh, I do believe there is a structural shift. Look, I think the housing demand has also dramatically gone up. The repainting cycles have come down. Uh, and people do, uh, we see a lot of trend of people wanting to repaint their interiors, even exteriors in much shorter cycles. So, you know, what used to be traditionally three to five years is now two to four years. So you see that, you know, coming back. And that is where we are seeing a huge amount of growth, growth structurally. Let's also remember that India is seeing a lot of work on the infrastructure segment. Huh? So if you look at uh, you know, infrastructure is going to see a huge amount of growth, whether you like it at a central government or state government, uh, given 2024 elections, etc. I think everybody will want to put the best show. I also think given the sort of consumption which is happening in the country, I think we are relatively insulated. So when I sit on calls, on the global call, when I hear some of my peers talking in Europe uh, and some other parts of Asia, I think there are many Asian countries, particularly in Southeast South Asia, I see as an outlier. Yeah, so really, I think we are blessed to be in this country. I do see that there is a, a structural uh, sort of correction and demand is still being fairly strong, uh, which is why I genuinely think that, uh, you know, we would see double digit growth, uh, keeping other things uh, constant for a moment. Uh, and I'm not talking of, uh, you know, any of the new players and new entries, et cetera, but keeping otherwise, I do see, you know, the companies doing well in the quarters ahead. Right. Okay, Rajiv, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time and speaking with us today.